Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. There is one body and one spirit. There is one Lord, one God, all of us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God, one Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever, Please be seated. reading from the Apostles, Acts of the Apostles. Now the Apostles and the believers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, Why did you go to uncircumcised men and eat with them? Then Peter began to explain it to them, step by step, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. There was something like a large sheet coming down from heaven, being lowered by its four corners, and it came close to me. As I looked at it closely, I saw four-footed animals, beasts of prey, reptiles, and birds of the air. I also heard a voice saying to me, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. But I replied, By no means, Lord, for nothing profanes or unclean has been entered my mouth. But a second time the voice answered from heaven, What God has made clean you must not call profane. This happened three times. Then everything was pulled up again to heaven. At that very moment, three men sent to me from Caesarea arrived at the house where they were. The Spirit told me to go with them and not to make a distinction between them and us. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. He told us how we had seen the angel standing in his house and saying, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will give you a message by which you and your entire household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, just as it had upon us in the beginning. And I remember the word of the Lord, how he had said, John, baptize with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then if God gave them the same gift that he gives us, when we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could hinder God? Then they heard this, they were silenced. And they praise God, saying, Then God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the Revelation to John. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to John. At the Last Supper, when Judas had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you. Him. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot go. I give you a new covenant that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord.
May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each heart be always acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. been a disaster. You'd have heard me singing. <laughs> it's a joy to be with you this weekend, a weekend with much to celebrate. I wonder, do we ordain someone every year on the Saturday before my official visitation, or was that just last year with Miriam and this year with Courtney? Once again, St. Andrews hits a home run as you continue to identify gifted and dedicated people for ordained ministry and then participate in their education and formation as clergy. Before I continue further, I would like to ask your rector, Jared, and all the ordained people, priests and deacons, and I know a couple of them are out of town, and some of them are not wearing their collars right now, but I'd like all of them that are serving St. Andrews to stand so we can show our gratitude for their service and leadership. As I've said before, you have an embarrassment of riches. It's wonderful. This morning we celebrate the Sacrament of Confirmation as I believe it's 26 people deep and further their lives in and through this beautiful tradition, the Episcopal Church. And to those of you being confirmed or uh, reaffirming your faith, we want you to know that it is a privilege to be a part of your lives on this day and on your journey and momentarily everyone gathered will make a vow to do all in our power to support you in your life in Christ. I tell you what, why don't we have those 26 people please stand and let's recognize them. All ministry, whether ordained or lay, is grounded in baptism. And by the way, I understand you all had nine baptisms this past Wednesday, and you actually brought in a horse trough from Claude, Texas, because some wanted to be dunked and use that as a font. That's a wonderful, wonderful, meaningful event, I know. And um, so I want to say three things briefly about baptism. And certainly there are more than three things to say. But first, in baptism, what was true all along is made known. You are God's child. Jesus was God's son before he was baptized and before he accomplished one thing in public ministry. And that's true for you too. What was true all along is made known, which is the definition of an epiphany. Second, at baptism, we are grafted into the body of Christ as living members of the body. We are living members of the risen body of Christ, and I'll say more about that momentarily. Third, we are called into this body for a purpose beyond ourselves, and that is to participate in God's mission, to restore all people to union with God and one another, and we participate in God's mission when we embody and proclaim God's love. As Jesus says in today's gospel, at the Last Supper to his disciples, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. Now all ministry takes place in a context. And if we are honest, these seem like especially challenging times to participate in God's mission of reconciliation. 
It seems to me, anyway, that our culture is more divided and more alienated than at any time in my lifetime, anyway. So I'm mindful of the prayer that we pray at ordinations. We also pray it at the great vigil of Easter and on Good Friday. We pray that the whole world can see and know that things which were cast down are being raised up, and things which had grown old are being made new, and that all things are being brought to their perfection by him through whom all things were made, Jesus Christ our Lord. In today's reading from the Revelation to John, the one seated on the throne says, See, I am making all things new. And that book, the Revelation, the Apocalypse, that book, was written during a particularly difficult time. Scholars believe it was written to comfort Christians as they underwent persecution at the hands of an emperor. The date, the date is debatable, but it's likely written during what we call an apocalyptic age. The Revelation of John is what scholars call apocalyptic literature, and one thing that all apocalyptic literature has in common, and there's apocalyptic, apocalyptic, apocalyptic literature all through the Bible, it all has in common this. It announces endings and beginnings. It announces endings and beginnings. Different periods in human history can be characterized as what we call apocalyptic ages. In other words, an age, a period in history when the old order dies and a new order is ushered in. The fall of the Roman Empire would be an example. Or remember the book or the movie Gone with the Wind, another example. Gone with the Wind depicts an apocalyptic age, the dying and rising of the Deep South with the highly predictable reaction of resistance to such death. Gone with the Wind is a good example of an ending and a beginning, a transition from one age to another, an apocalyptic age. Some historians speculate that we have been living in an apocalyptic age of sorts, of sorts. And, and of course they don't mean the kind of apocalypse that we might hear about on street corners or read about in left behind novels. They're talking about endings and beginnings. And what, what they claim happens in an apocalyptic age, a time of deep sea change, uh, there, there are characteristics to that. And those characteristics include a pessimism around the present age. And it includes a deep hunger for absolute answers. So there's a rise in fundamentalism. And we see that in this era for sure. Jesus of Nazareth lived in an apocalyptic age, even announced it. We can turn to the last week of his life, probably two or three days before the Last Supper. Jesus is in the temple with some of his followers, and his followers are speaking about the temple, and they're marveling at how it is adorned with beautiful stones. You remember this story? And Jesus says, do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left upon another. All will be thrown down. The temple will fall, he says. And then Jesus proceeds to tell his followers that their whole world will be turned upside down. Nations will rise against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms, and there will be earthquakes and famines. The temple will fall, Jesus says. But this is far more than the destruction of a significant sacred space, however awful that is, and you know about that. To capture the magnitude and meaning of what Jesus is claiming here, we need to understand the emotional freight behind the Jewish understanding of the temple. We need to understand that for a big part of history, the people of Israel, that for the, pe for the people of Israel, the temple is where God lives. God resides in the temple. 
Previously, the presence and power of God could be found in the Ark of the Covenant, and now it's the temple. God is present in the temple, and Jesus says it will fall. And Jesus doesn't even stop with the temple. He says, heaven and earth will pass away. Jesus is claiming here that God is doing a new thing. The old order is dying. God is doing something new. And all of this, Jesus says, is but the beginning of birth pains. Out of this ending comes a new beginning, a new birth. Out of death comes resurrection. Whether the death of an age, a period in history, or the death of my own world as I knew it, or even death itself, out of death by God's grace comes resurrection. Things which were cast down are being raised up. I wonder if Jesus is proclaiming not only a new age, not only a new birth, a new beginning, but also proclaiming a new temple. But the tradition has moved from believing that God is present in the Ark of the Covenant to believing that God is particularly, particularly present in the temple in Jerusalem. And now Jesus says the temple will fall. It's an ending and a beginning. The Apostle Paul and the Apostle Peter will tell us about the new temple. Paul says, God's temple is holy, and you are that temple. Peter says something, something similar. Peter refers to us, the church, as the new resurrected temple. Like living stones, let your house be built, a spiritual house. Peter takes what Jesus predicts, that stones will all be thrown down, and says, like living stones, let your house be built the new resurrected temple, the temple of the living God is us, the church. In our prayers yesterday during the ordination, the church was referenced in those prayers as the temple of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is proclaiming a new temple. There's an interesting history about the word temple. The word temple lies at the root of the word contemplation, as in contemplative prayer. Contemple, contemplative. A Catholic priest and author named Ronald Roheiser tells us that this word structure is not an accident, but that long before the word temple referred to a building on earth, the ancient peoples believed that the word designated a place in the sky, a certain divine arrangement of the stars, a dwelling place for deities. Part of the root idea of contemplation was to build on earth something which corresponded with the temple in the sky, to bring together the two temples, to connect heaven and earth. Connecting heaven and earth. Maybe that's our vocation, our calling, our role in the grand scheme of things as church. Maybe that's the macro view of our calling to be a conduit, connecting heaven and earth. And maybe the way we do that is by loving others as Jesus loves us. About three weeks ago, the priests of this diocese met for some retreat time at Bishop DeFalco Retreat Center here in Amarillo. By the way, they are wonderful hosts for such events, showing generous hospitality and providing really, really good food. <laughs> at one point, I asked the gathering to participate in a in an exercise around congregational vitality. I serve on a general convention legislative committee charged with exploring congregational 
and diocesan vitality. We're, we're seeing endings and beginnings in the church, so people are asking, what does vitality look like? What are signs of vitality and so forth? I wonder if at the root of this exploration is our desire to see and know that things which were cast down are being raised up and things which had grown old are being made new. I wonder if we want to see evidence like Thomas. We want to see evidence of dying and rising, death and resurrection. And anyway, the clergy of this diocese pushed back on this exercise, led by your rector, Thank God he didn't humor me. <laughs> Led by your rector, I was told that the vitality question is the wrong question. So I asked, what is the right question? And our priest in Odessa, Ricardo Lopez, answered quickly with universal agreement. He said this. He said, the question is, how do we love? How do we love? I'm surprised he didn't say, go back and listen to your own sermons, Bishop. <laughs> whatever, whatever measurements a committee may come up with to determine vitality, St. Andrews would pass with flying colors. You do have a beautiful vitality and vibrancy, and you're very much alive. You check all those boxes, and they're important. But above all, you love. You love. And that's always the answer in any age or context. Love. The candidates for confirmation will now be presented. We present these persons for confirmation. And we present this person for reaffirmation. To the candidates. You have your bulletins? All right. <laughs> Page seven. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil? Do you renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? Would everyone please stand as you're able? Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ? We will. Let us join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God?
you believe in God the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the greatest of sins, the Lord Jesus Christ, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the blessed. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, God's will. will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, God's will. will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, God's will. will you strive for justice and peace among all people? and respect the dignity of every human being. Let us now pray for these persons who are to receive the sacrament of new birth and those who have renewed their commitment to Christ. Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach them to love others in the power of the spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send them into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we thank you that by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome sin and brought us to yourself. And that by the sealing of your Holy Spirit, you have bound us to your service. Renew in these your servants the covenant you made with them at their baptism. Send them forth in the power of that Spirit to perform the service you set before them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. this time you may be seated. Um, Father Jared is going to call one person at a time to come forward for confirmation and when he does those who are parents or family or sponsors or friends may come forward and join me in the laying on of hands. We present Jordan Ackerman for confirmation. Strengthen, O Lord, your servant Jordan with your Holy Spirit. Empower her for your service and sustain her all the days of her life. Amen. We present Madison Ackerman for confirmation. Strengthen, O Lord, your servant Madison with your Holy Spirit. Empower her for your service and sustain her all the days of her life. Amen. We present Brody for confirmation.
Strengthen, O Lord, your servant Brody with your Holy Spirit. Empower him for your service and sustain him all the days of his life. Amen. We present Knox for confirmation. Strengthen, O Lord, your servant Knox with your Holy Spirit. Empower him for your service and sustain him all the days of his life. Amen. 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 We present Brock for confirmation. Strengthen, O Lord, your servant Brock with your Holy Spirit. Empower him for your service and sustain him all the days of his life. Amen. Amen. We present Yahya for confirmation. Strengthen, O Lord, your servant Yahya with your Holy Spirit. Empower her for your service and sustain her all the days of her life. Amen. Amen. We present Amanda for confirmation. Strengthen, O Lord, your servant Amanda with your Holy Spirit. Empower her for your service and sustain her all the days of her life. Amen. Amen. We present Tino and Matthew for confirmation. Strengthen, O Lord, your servant Tino with your Holy Spirit. Empower him for your service and sustain him all the days of his life. Amen. Amen. Strengthen, O Lord, your servant Matthew with your Holy Spirit. Empower him for your service and sustain him all the days of his life. Amen. Amen. We present Alex for confirmation. Alex? Alex. Strengthen, O Lord, your servant Alex with your Holy Spirit. Empower her for your service and sustain her all the days of her life. Amen. Amen. We present Aaron and Dustin for confirmation.
Strengthen, O Lord, your servant Dustin with your Holy Spirit. Empower him for your service and sustain him all the days of his life. Amen. Strengthen, O Lord, your servant Aaron with your Holy Spirit. Empower him for your service and sustain him all the days of his life. Amen. Amen. We present Jeremy for confirmation. Strengthen, O Lord, your servant Jeremy with your Holy Spirit. Empower him for your service and sustain him all the days of his life. Amen. Amen. We present Simon for confirmation. Strengthen, O Lord, your servant Simon with your Holy Spirit. Empower him for your service and sustain him all the days of his life. Amen. Amen. We present Piper for confirmation. Strengthen, O Lord, your servant Piper with your Holy Spirit. Empower her for your service and sustain her all the days of her life. Amen. Amen. We present Max McCart for confirmation. Strengthen, O Lord, your servant Max with your Holy Spirit. Empower him for your service and sustain him all the days of his life. Amen. Amen. We present Patrick for confirmation. Strengthen, O Lord, your servant Patrick with your Holy Spirit. Empower him for your service and sustain him all the days of his life. Amen. 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 
we present Norm for confirmation. Strengthen, O Lord, your servant Norm with your Holy Spirit. Empower him for your service and sustain him all the days of his life. Amen. Amen. We present Chris for confirmation. Strengthen, O Lord, your servant Chris with your Holy Spirit. Empower him for your service and sustain him all the days of his life. Amen. Amen. We present Jonas for confirmation. Strengthen, O Lord, your servant Jonas with your Holy Spirit. Empower him for your service and sustain him all the days of his life. Amen. Amen. We present Max Sawyer for confirmation. Strengthen, O Lord, your servant Max with your Holy Spirit. Empower him for your service and sustain him all the days of his life. Amen. Amen. We present Lenny for confirmation. Strengthen, O Lord, your servant Lenny with your Holy Spirit. Empower her for your service and sustain her all the days of her life. Amen. Amen. We present Lane for confirmation. Strengthen, O Lord, your servant Lane with your Holy Spirit. Empower her for your service and sustain her all the days of her life. Amen. Amen. We present Perry for confirmation. Strengthen, O Lord, your servant Perry with your Holy Spirit. Empower her for your service and sustain her all the days of her life. Amen. Amen. 
we present Beth for confirmation. Strengthen, O Lord, your servant Beth with your Holy Spirit, empower her for your service, and sustain her all the days of her life. Amen. 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 We present Christopher for reaffirmation. Christopher, may the Holy Spirit, who has begun a good work in you, direct and uphold you in the service of Christ and his kingdom. Amen. Amen. prayer book. Can I borrow your prayer book? Thank you. Would all the confirmands please stand? Anybody know what page confirmation's on? Here, I got it. Say it, dude. There's one more prayer, and I'm determined to pray it. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, let your fatherly hand ever be over these your servants. Let your Holy Spirit ever be with them and so lead them in the knowledge and obedience of your word, that they may serve you in this life and dwell with you in the life to come. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you're able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Okay, if you are celebrating a birthday or anniversary, we have a treat this morning. Our 
uh, newly ordained priest in the Diocese of Northwest Wait, Texas will be doing me. blessing. <laughs> Looky here, anniversary. Do we have a birthday coming down the aisle? Looking oh. in the transepts, <laughs> anniversary. Okay. And are we celebrating anybody's birthday anniversary online? Not so far. Okay. Birthday? Nice. Okay. Why don't you come over here and join Monica for the birthdays? Anniversary? Anniversary? Birthday. Birthday? Birthday? Double birthday? We're twins. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Four days apart, really? Wow. Okay. okay. Wow. For four days, he's older than you. For four days, he's only two years older than you. Okay. <laughs> Okay. All right. Okay. Go ahead. Anniversary, it. anniversary, birthdays. We got them lined up? Yes. Great. Okay. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. The Lord mercifully with his favor look upon you and fill you with all spiritual benediction and grace that you may faithfully live together in this life and in the age to come have life everlasting. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. The Lord mercifully with his favor look upon you and fill you with all spiritual benediction and grace that you may faithfully live together in this life and the age to come have life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in thy hearts, may thy peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday and happy anniversary. How about the kids? How about all the kids? All the kids. I think we're going to need reinforcements. Yeah, if you'll, and we'll cross in the middle. Cross in the middle. Sounds good. Okay. We'll do it. Everybody together. Father of generous fathers, we Okay, you guys can have a seat. Thank you all so much. Everybody can have a seat. And I'm going to invite everybody to uh, turn to page 18 in your, your bulletin. Just a few announcements. Um, this is a weird thing to do announcements with this mic. I feel like, uh, like I should do a James Brown trick with this thing. Wow! Uh, I'll never do that again, I promise. <laughs> Friday, May 20th, is our parents' night out, 6 to 9. You can uh, email our nursery coordinator, Jennifer, right there, and sign up to register your kid. Sunday, May 22nd, that's a week from today, is Graduate Sunday. So if you have a graduate in your life, please let us know about it, if you haven't already, and uh, show up and be here to show your support and send them off with love. We'll be reintroducing 20 minutes a year this summer. You guys were awesome uh, last year in signing up for that the entire year. 
Um, so many of you, week in, week out, spent time with our kids in our children's ministry, and you were such a gift to them, and I think they were a gift back to you. Uh, so we're doing that again this summer. So if there's something you want to spend time with and just share with our kids in our children's ministry, whatever you're passionate about, why ever you love the church, your favorite Bible story or prayer or whatever, uh, feel free to do that and sign up. Saturday, June 4th, they were confirmed today and they're getting married soon on Saturday, June 4th. Aaron Hart and Dustin Sanders, and they wanted to, everybody to know all are invited to participate in that wedding. Well, not to participate in the ceremony, but to be here. <laughs> everybody is welcome to be here, and there's going to be a fantastic reception afterward in the parish hall, correct? So uh, come one, come all, and join in the fun. Thursday, June 9th is our first brown bag Bible study. We've been talking about this a couple of weeks. We're going to be making our way chronologically through the letters of Paul, so we're going to start with the book of Galatians and uh, keep going. So that's Thursdays at noon, starting June 9th. So I hope you can make it and be a part of that. And a couple of uh, uh, announcements that didn't make it is, uh, one is just a big thank you uh, to everybody who has participated and turned out and been a part of the celebrations this week. Uh, what a tremendous week we've had here in the life of St. Andrews with the baptisms the bishop mentioned in his sermon. And uh, thank you all. And then yesterday for uh, celebrating the ordination of Courtney Jones. So just a tremendous week. Thank you for all of you who've helped with meals, with cleanup, with setup, and just being here in the services, the altar guild, the flower guild, the choirs, both Bell and the choral choir, Michael. None of this could happen if we didn't come together as a community of faith. And y'all have made that possible. So thank you very much. The second thing is uh, coming up in June, it's our first trucking event. Second Wednesday of June, these were a big hit last year, and we raised like over $30,000 for local nonprofits, and we're going to try to do even better this year. Second Wednesday of June, Geezer's Gone Wild is going to be the live music. Uh, they were a big hit last year. We thought they'd be a good debut. Um, we're going to have food trucks. We're going to have the beer, trap, beer tap truck in the courtyard again. Um, and we're going to be raising money for a nonprofit, which you'll hear about soon. So be uh, inviting people to that already. Uh, it's going to be a great time. And then last but not least, I just want to thank uh, Bishop Scott for being here and uh, Bishop Scott's wife, Kathy. Um, it's been a, a lovely weekend with them. And uh, thank you all for the support and the encouragement. And uh, yeah, I heard a start of an applause. And I'm just on a, a personal note. Um, the first time Eric and I w walked into an Episcopal church, uh, he wasn't Bishop Scott then. He was Father Scott at Church of the Heavenly Rest in Abilene. And uh, a couple of weeks ago, Courtney preached a fantastic sermon about voices and how to use voices in our life. And uh, Bishop Scott was the first voice I heard in the Episcopal church. And I've always loved his preaching and his teaching and he's been a source of encouragement and affirmation throughout our entire time in the Episcopal Church, which has become Eric and I's family. So uh, just thank you on a personal note, Bishop Scott, for all your encouragement and for a wonderful sermon this morning. All right, I'm not celebrating Eucharist, but our new priest is, so she gets to say the offertory. I have a line here. <laughs> Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in Jesus Christ our Lord you have received us as your sons and daughters and made us citizens of your kingdom and given us the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Our service continues with Eucharistic Prayer B, which is in your pew sheet on page 13. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where, with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, blessed Andrew, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, 
forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us.
using the post-communion prayer found on page uh, 365 of your prayer book or in your pew bulletin. Let us pray together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of this community, we send you forth bearing these holy gifts, that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body because we all share one bread and one cup. Before the bishop gives us a final blessing, I want to invite everyone to a reception in the parish hall that will be happening immediately after we dismiss. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Love you. I love you too. Pardon me? Yep, yep. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Got to open it up. Might have to. <laughs> Could be. You never know. <laughs> but wait a second. I want to shake your hand. I just want to make sure.